Cleveland Browns defense is good. But I, before we even break that down, and I wonder if we got the sound of Jimmy Haslam. Huh. We talk about Jerry Jones. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Not only did he throw $230 million guaranteed at Deshaun Watson, he's also bought guaranteed. $232 million guaranteed. Guaranteed. God, that's a lot of money. He also just bought the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Jimmy Haslam was a minority owner with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then he got in with the Cleveland Browns, bought them for over a billion dollars from the Lerner family. And he has some controversial things happening, which is no surprise to me that he would take a chance on a guy like Deshaun Watson. He's like, he did not care. He's like 50 and 100. Like, yeah. uh, his uh, record's essentially. Terrible. Yeah, his record is horrific. One postseason appearance. Spends half his time with the Cleveland Browns. By the way, that they beat the Steelers. In they game. beat the Steelers in that game. Which is crazy. Which is insane. He's a longtime Tennessee fan, of course. Oh, he's worth a lot of money, man. A lot of money. But he was the guy who said, you know what? I don't care what's going on with Deshaun Watson. I'm going to bring him in anyway. Yeah. And he pissed off a lot of people by giving him the money. But there's a lot of sound that you went down a rabbit hole and grabbed. And, uh, you know, it was kind of reminding me of all the mess that he made. Which is Martin. makes me intrigued with him in the NBA. Like, some of the things that he's done. That's what I'm saying. Now he's in the NBA. I didn't realize how weird he is, number one. And some of the things that he's done. I mean, he hired a baseball guy to run his football team. Yeah. Paul D. Podesta. Yeah, remember that? And then, like, they asked him, like, hey, what exactly do you do here? Like, they basically gave him, you ever seen Office Space? Mm-hmm. What is it exactly that you do here? Like, that's literally what a reporter asked him. Could you imagine someone asking Larry Bear that? What do you actually do? What is Lubbock? exactly that you do well, here? Lubman's dying to ask that. that <laughs> um, but somebody did ask Jimmy Haslam. We have that sound of what they asked him, how much time he spends with Khalifa Browns. This is when John Dorsey, remember Dorsey was yes. on Hard Knocks with Hugh Jackson. Yes. And now, you know what? He was with the Detroit Lions staff last year. I don't know if he's there this year, uh, but he was in that meeting room. Remember on Hard Knocks with Dan Campbell yes. talking? Dorsey was in the back taking notes or whatnot as a consultant. But John Dorsey had to take up for him. Here's the sound what the reporter did ask Jimmy Haslam how much time he spent with the Cleveland Browns. How much do you actually get involved with all this communication and do you like, get in the way sometimes? He pays the bills, too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure I understood the question. I mean, how, how much you talk about uh, John reporting to you, now uh, Greg Williams instead of you. So how much do you really do with this with a football team on a daily basis? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that. I mean, you know, I'm here a fair amount, probably half the time when I'm here, I'm involved with the football and business people. Can I answer that? Sure. Can I take a shot at this? I have. I mean, to me, it's it's a natural trend. I mean, it's a chain of command, and sometimes that's okay to have the coach and, and the general manager sitting there because he has ownership, and the ownership wants to know. And you know what? That's what we. I mean, you're going to explain to him what's going on. I think that's natural in anything you do. I mean, that's unbelievable. The GM cut off the owner to explain that. Yeah, he talks to the owner, and the owner didn't even have an answer on what he did on a daily basis. That's unbelievable. Why are you sitting at the podium? Look, we could rip Jed for a lot of things as we compare and contrast. When he's at the podium, he got bodied for the whole Jim Harbaugh thing, right? No, everyone would admit, like, it wasn't the finest of looks. <laughs> since then, though, since then, he's never not said the right thing at a table, no. at a podium, right? He's he's pretty like, hey, those guys run football. They asked me to write a check. I cleared the check. Like, I think he's done the PR, you know, car wash where they've actually – prepped him so that he's ready for these questions. It feels like Cleveland, it's like a mom and pops operation just winging it. Yeah, no doubt. And li- listen to this. In 2014, Pilot J was found responsible. This is Haslam's company. Yeah. He was responsible for defrauding truckers of $56.5 million in a five-year scheme. And 17 oh, executives boy. and staff members were sentenced. Haslam was deposed in the investigation but did not face any charges. The company paid a $92 million fine. $92 million fine. This guy's had it. That's not just the, the only. Way, he's like, also the owner of an 0 and 16 season in 2017. Right. No doubt. No doubt. He, he is that. He has no problem with that. So he's been part of that. He says some other things. Um, and we got more sound on Jimmy Haslam. How about when Johnny Manziel was drafted? Do you remember this one, Bonte, from Sal Palantonio, who did a yep. sit down with Jimmy Haslam? <laughs> a quick story. Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the team, I spent about 30 minutes in his office today, and we talked a lot about football. And he said, you know what? I can go out to dinner anywhere in Tennessee, and nobody bothers me. That's his home state. But he said, here in Cleveland, everywhere I go, people know me, and I was out. 
out to dinner recently and a homeless person was out on the street, looked up at me and said, draft Manziel, just like that. And that convinced them that the Cleveland Browns fans wanted Manziel. Boomer. Bonte, we can have our umbrage with how they selected Trey Lance, who they were supposed to pick, what they didn't do in the due diligence. A homeless person told the owner to draft Johnny Manziel, so the owner told the team to draft Johnny Manziel. Yeah, yeah, That's about as bad as it gets. That's as bad as it gets. Well, how about a fan being kicked out of a game for throwing a bottle at Jimmy Haslam? He was so sick of Jimmy Haslam. He struck him with a bottle on the field late in the game. I don't, no, I don't condone, condone that. that. Yeah, I don't but condone. that just shows you how much Cleveland Brown fans can't stand the odor. Is that like, worse than getting you. a shoe thrown at you like uh, the president did? Or you get cake. <laughs> oh, get cake thrown at you like your booby dicks in yeah. yeah. How about we need to clip that and tag all the people in Philly? <laughs> this is what a former NFL player said about your fans. You guys are now throwing cake. It adds to it. Cake. We're going to throw cake. Some. A cake that you bit into, we're going to throw it at somebody. Could you imagine walking down 6th and Market? Hey, hey. Who do you think the Giants should sign in, in the in free agency? Farhan get, get, walks up to the press. He's oh. like, you know, I was actually talking with one of the crazy people there on oh. uh, the United Nations Plaza, and and he told me, you need to trade. You need to trade for an outfielder. Well, well, you know who that outfielder know. is. <laughs> AJ, Pollock. AJ Pollock. AJ Pollock. No, well, see, number one, so I trade Farhan, for AJ Pollock. Farhan's data team and his research team will tell him that. Hey, you know what? It's probably not safe for you to walk down 6th Street. Matter of fact, opposing players don't like coming oh, to the oh, city. Yeah, that's true. So you know what? I'm probably not going to walk down to San Francisco. I'll probably just go to Napa Valley or go down to Menlo Atherton or something. Or go down to Menlo Park. I, I don't know. Farhan's not walking the streets of San Francisco. No. Remember when he first got hired as president of baseball opera? He goes, you know, going to the games. And I would get the vibe of walking in from downtown, going to the games. Like, wow, this is really cool. Like, stop lying. Stop the cap, Farhan. You wouldn't walk into no damn Oracle Park. Please. They said the, the 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 text line is now telling us that the the Browns personnel has sent people out here to find scouts all around the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> you know, honestly, though, uh, uh, something that I don't think we have given enough credit for. Well, Jed and the ownership group has been extremely stable, and obviously, they gave extensions to John Lynch and right. Kyle Shanahan. They've given them everything that they've need. They've given them financial wherewithal. They have told them, hey, you have the autonomy to make a trade for big-time players. We will put the money in escrow right. to pay people up front. If you want to trade draft picks to go swing big or to go get current players, do it. If you need multiple quarterbacks making decent coin, do it. If you want to trade away the number 3 overall pick after like four starts and you really truly believe in this other guy, well, you've been wildly successful. You've mm -hmm. earned it. Do it. Like, I, I think... I, I do think we've underrated Jed York's importance. You've kind of been all over this. He's he's done a really good job no, staying is. out of the way. He's staying out of the way. The organization seems to be humming with class people in the organization. First class That's a good people. Point. No trouble. And you think about Jimmy Haslam. Remember Seth Wickersham came out with his story on ESPN.com. We all forget about this. And it just got I was kind of looking at the Cleveland Brown situation to Jimmy Haslam, because you forget they had guys streaming porn in their workplace. They were uh, conjured detrimental to women up in there. Um, remember Joe Banner got fired and Michael Lombardi. They went all crazy on, uh, you know, they went all crazy on Jimmy Haslam. It just had so many things happen in the workplace under Jimmy Haslam. And so when you think and compare and contrast to the quarterback situation, to the players, to what they're doing in Cleveland, in Cleveland, and it's probably not the first thing to happen. It's probably not the only time this happened under Jimmy Haslam. He's not there half the time. No. He don't give a damn about the team. Well, he does when he's discussing it with Hugh Jackson, for example. Oh. Uh, could you imagine? Just I mean, You're going to play you a sound here. Just think Kyle Shanahan and Jed, because you can't. You can't think that. Listen to Hugh Jackson, who was 1-31, I believe, as uh, head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Listen to what he says about, about the owner. Jimmy Haslam and John Dorsey came into your office mm -hmm. to let you go. Mm -hmm. You said, get the f out of my office. I sure did. Okay. Well, because I just didn't believe that the reasoning that was behind it, that the team had quit, I wasn't buying that. You know, and nobody's going to tell me even here today that the team quit. We played in too many overtime games. <laughs> we had too many opportunities to win games early in the year. So I felt that was disrespectful coming from John Dorsey. That, you, that he was insinuating basically that you couldn't get the team to keep Absol playing. Absolutely. I mean... 
go back and look at those first two years to get the team to keep playing and then look at this year, I thought there was improvement happening. Obviously, we had games that we could have won that we didn't win. At the end of the day, we didn't, but I sure thought we were well on our way to improving. Is there anything you would have done differently in Cleveland? I would have stayed as the offensive coordinator myself. I would have called Really? It. Absolutely. Why? Uh, the CEO game doesn't fit me. Okay. I mean, I love leading organization and men and giving direction, but I'm a play caller. You know, I'm a strategist as far as offense is concerned. I'd earned that reputation, and I gave it up after those first two years. Stark contrast to Kyle Shanahan, no? Big time. Big time. Now, you can talk about Johnny Menzel. And this quote was great. 2014. Johnny Menzel. 2014, He right? beat the Niners, by the way. I know. But 2014, Ray Farmer was a GM of the Cleveland Browns. And that draft had nothing but uh, Jimmy Haslam guests in there. All his buddies and friends, right? Really? All in the war room. And this is after he fired Joe Banner and Michael Lombardi. Your boy, Michael Lombardi. Uh -huh. And he fired him, which didn't, you know, at the time didn't make sense. And so... Michael, I invented <laughs> football Lombardi? Yeah, well, that guy. Um, so I stood next to Belichick once, and now I have a podcast? Yep, yeah, there you go. Blake Bortles, Chetty Bridgewater, Derek Carr, Brennan Cooks, all these guys were on the draft board. <laughs> wow. And, you know, Ray Farmer's like, you know what, why don't we just get Teddy Bridgewater the second round? You know the reason why Jimmy Haslam didn't like Teddy Bridgewater? He said he didn't like the way he shook his hand. Just rubbed him the wrong way. Really? That's why he soured on Teddy Bridgewater. Sounds like somebody I know behind the scenes over here who thinks Joe Lacob doesn't have the greatest handshake. Mm -hmm. who, who's that? Spadoni. This is very awkward. I'm just going to be honest. Do you nah, have this, one of those limp handshakes? I, but billionaires are different. I don't hey, know. I shook his hand at, at Media know. Day. The handshake was fine. There was no limp handshake. It was hand-to-hand, -hand, man to man It was a one-off. You know. Yeah. You don't judge people by a handshake? Yeah. Well... Uh, if you do it consistently. Okay. Like, I love Carl Buzchek, right? Our yeah. former digital guy. His handshake sucked. He had a, he had the worst handshake in the world. I was like, come on, dude. What do you it, mean? It just was, it was like grabbing fingers. It was like grabbing terrible handshake. fingers? His handshake yeah, you got to dig in. His handshake was awful. Yeah, but I also don't want you to pull an Adrian Peterson and try yeah. to, like, you know, do what Superman did to Zod when he zapped all their powers and crushed my fingers. Yeah, but if you do it consistently, it's like, Joe Lake, if that was a one-off, you know? Like, we'll shake his hand in a couple weeks when it comes to the studio, you know? It's, but Jimmy Haslam didn't like Teddy Bridgewater because of the handshake. Basically, he's like, yeah, I'm not on him. I don't like the way So basically, be. the owner does have in input in Cleveland on who they draft. Exactly. Wow. You don't think he does now either? You don't think he's all in the mix? I mean, I mean if, but Bonte, do you, you think that GM, whoever was the GM at the time for the Cleveland Browns, do you really think they wanted to trade for Deshaun Watson? You think they want that on their resume? You think Te <sighs> Kevin Stefanski wants that on his resume? I don't know. I mean, when you're quarterback desperate, you will do desperate things, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a reason. Carson Wentz kept getting traded for. Yeah. I mean, if people are going to swing on someone who everybody in the locker room hates but has some talent, you're going to overlook a lot of things. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Yeah. Especially when your job or your NFL resume depends on nope. it. No doubt. No doubt. So Jimmy Haslam and the Browns are a mess, even though they have a really good defense here. Their defense is giving up 75 yards a game on the ground. Uh, they're giving up 15 points a game. Uh, they held the Bengals at 142 total yards in week one. Now, Mary Kay Cabot said the weather was a little bit, but I watched that game. They were they were dominating. They were dominating. It was on red zone alongside the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Niners. They dominated Joe Burrow and company. Uh, you Even against Pittsburgh. You think Carl now wakes up? I've, I just can't get this out of my head. He's waking what? up this morning, and you're just rat-a-tat-tatting him about his bad handshake? Well, we brought him up last time, and he said a buddy hit him up, and he was like, what did you guys say? What do you, you know? What do you guys say? You, you disrespect me? Nobody's disrespect you. And if we do talk bad, if we do talk best about you, it's because we love you. So that's the worst handshake you've ever received? Yeah, Carl Blushek had a terrible handshake. I'm not gonna lie. Terrible handshake. Terrible. Like James C underscore nineteen eighty two on, on uh -huh, YouTube. Uh -huh. He risks me all the time. I still love the guy. I'm cool with that. We can all talk best to each other. But Carl, I was a little I didn't really want to say it, but I was like, you know what the hell with it? His handshake was terrible. It needs to be known. That's Wheatley Sandretto, our digital manager. He knows his handshake was awful. Carl Blue's check's handshake was terrible. <laughs> Put it on the poll right now on our Morning Rose Twitter. Do you judge someone by their handshake? Yes or no? Just very wow. simple. Yes wow. or no? I, I would love to hear from people. 888-957-9570. Yeah. Yes Bernie, or no? Bernie Colzar is going to join us in 18 minutes. Bernie Colzar, Cleveland Browns legend, Miami Hurricane legend, won their first ever national championship, beating Nebraska 31-30. Yeah. Um <laughs> 
This handshake's better. Like, if you have a terrible handshake, sometimes I got to do a do-over. Come on. Like, what are the biggest moments of my life? Working with Mr. Fab, oh. 2019 okay. NBA Finals. Okay. He was like, Snoop's coming on a set. I thought maybe he'd be working with me on no, a Tuesday. That, that's, no, that's not even close. Um, actually, regret some of these days on the morning roast. I'm like, damn, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Down bad right now working with Joe Shasky. No, I'm kidding. You know, I'm kidding. But 2019 NBA Finals, Mr. Fab, we're doing the show right before the finals. And I'm like, boy, Snoop's coming up to the set. And he walked up, put his hand out. And in my head, I said, if I, make, if I mess up this handshake, I'll never be able to hold, uh, live it down. I watch it back, and I'm like, boy, that was one of the best handshakes I ever gave. It was right on point. Boom, yeah. boom. Did you go in with the, like, the, the, the backpack? No, not the backpack, because I was sitting down. Gotcha. So we got the handshake, so boom, boom. Dap. And I was like, ooh, I nailed that. Yeah? I remember one time, Draymond Green, when I was working at Bleacher Report, one of the biggest moments of my life. Okay. I was sitting next to Draymond Green at the time. Not this having is, your daughter. Not having my shaking daughter. Hands no, shaking hands with Snoop. No, shaking hands with Snoop and Draymond just Green. just want to make sure we clarify this. Neri Stein, who used to work at Bleacher Report. Shout out to Neri Stein. She's a big Liverpool fan. Okay. She goes, boy, you shook Draymond's hand like you guys were boys. That was very impressive. You got to fake it till you make it. Got it down on the first time. So, a big hand, a handshake is important. Getting it right is important. You can't give no weak daps, man. I'm getting a lot of texts personally that are distracting me about Carl's handshake within the office. Why? Just, hey, Carl, you're going to have to work on your handshake. It's handshake off season for you. You need to get a trainer and you need to work on the handshake. It sounds I'm like. telling you, his handshakes are terrible. <laughs> Go with John Curley. Go call John Curley. Go call Brian Ryder. Go call somebody who shook hands with. I'm telling you, the handshake is awful. Well, there's nothing worse than when you go to shake someone's hand and you don't get it all the way in there and you get about halfway and you do like, ah, I'm not done. But I absolutely judge people. So, I admit, so maybe, I, I so maybe Jimmy, based on So handshake. maybe Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the Cleveland Browns, was right to judge Teddy Bridgewater on his handshake. Well, Teddy Bridgewater has sustained in the NFL for he quite has. some time. Was he wearing one of his patented gloves? That's mm. another question. <laughs> Teddy wearing two gloves? gloves? Teddy two gloves. Teddy was two he, gloves. So they were at a dinner. They were in, you know, the pre-draft interview. You have a dinner with the owner or whatnot. Nice little steak dinner. Was he wearing gloves at the dinner? Highly doubtful. Well, one thing that I've noticed that I do way more than than often is I'm a hugger, and so like I'll go in for like the hug, and I barely know some of these people, and they're like, "What the hell are you doing?" I'm like, hey, "Look, I'm sorry. I'm a hugger. I apologize. It's just weird. I get I get the anxiety, and I I see myself doing dumb oh, things oh. that I immediately regret. Do you guys uh, know what I'm talking about? Oh, Where you're yeah. in like a certain setting or, or situation, <laughs> How about this, and you like go like one step too far. <laughs> oh, we got we got confirmation here. Confer or no confirmation, but Comcast business text line nine two five. Carl Bluecheck is my boss's nephew. This is hilarious to hear. <laughs> Ask Carl Bluecheck. By the way, I think his brother went to Miami. Oh. Uh, Carl Bluecheck's brother. He used to always go down to Miami, go visit his brother. Uh, and Carl Bluecheck used to be our former digital manager. Uh, he left us during the pandemic. Um, then he all of a sudden started covering the A's again. <laughs> It's like having A's right. takes. We're getting exclusive from the from the 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 female demographic. Uh oh, my mother in law. Yes, absolutely. Nothing will leave an impression more than a dead fish handshake. Mm. And that that is someone who understands life. I'll just say that. Shout out Mary. Shout out Mary. Not Mary Kay Cabot. No. Mary. You two poll question of the day. <laughs> Do you judge someone based off their handshake? 70 votes so far. It's just been up in for three minutes. What do you think Jim 